Home Assistant is getting more and more popular and I couldn't be more thrilled about it. I love Home Assistant. But getting started in Home Assistant can be a little bit confusing. Let's face it, it's not a very user-friendly system, not yet at least. So here are my very first five things you should do after you install Home Assistant to get you started the right way. Let's get started. All right, guys, so as you can see, we are looking at a fresh, blank, vanilla install of Home Assistant. In my case, it's a virtual machine running on Proxmox, but it can be uh, a Home Assistant installed on hardware. It doesn't really matter. And just before we're getting started, I will tell you that there aren't just five things you need to do after installing. There are close to 500. I just chose the very first five you should do. And out of these first five, I think the very first one, if we'll get, get started working here, is to set your device up with a static IP address instead of a default DHCP one. A lot of your other devices that you will add to Home Assistant will rely on Home Assistant having the same IP address each and every time. So if we'll go into settings and system and network, if we'll expand the IPv4 section right here, this is the current. These are the current settings, which are automatic, meaning DHCP. Please change it to static. Select an IP address that is outside of the scope of what your DHCP server is leasing. In my case, I will select that forty dot five. All other settings are, of course, according to your network. For example, the net mask will probably stay the same. The the gateway, the DNS servers are yours to pick from but usually only the IP address value really needs to change. So in that case, let's click on save. At this point, if the IP address is different than the current one, in my case, this is the current one, and the one I assigned is different, we'll need to give it a, a, a few seconds and then we'll go and change the IP address in our browser to the one that we have just handed out and log in. And that's actually the very first one of the five things you should do, already done. And believe me, I think this is the most important one. Moving on with the first things I think you need to do in order to uh, successfully get your Home Assistant instance ready for work is installing one of two very basic add-ons. Again, if you'll go to settings and add-ons, Right now we don't have any add-ons installed, so let's click on the add-on store and there are several add-ons already curated for you. With the first one you'll need to select is the file editor and click on install. The file editor is actually a built-in tool that will help you along the way. It's not really relevant to the first day or two of working in Home Assistant, but a lot of things in Home Assistant are based on YAML files, which are uh, configuration files that without this add-on you will not have a chance even to see them so let's click on add to sidebar and click on start all right so the add-on has started and just to get a sort of a glimpse or a taste of what this add-on allows you to do here is the add-on item in the sidebar so let's click on it and a lot of the things configured in home assistant are are in the in this file in the configuration yaml file so now we can see what the current configuration YAML file includes. Currently it includes almost nothing, but this add-on will allow you to add or subtract things in the future. And that's the importance of this add-on. So that's item number two on the list. Item number three is almost the same. It's also installing an add-on, but this time it will be the Samba Share add-on. There are a few uh, things you need to uh, pay attention with this add-on. So let's click on install. And now that the add-on is installed, we'll need to go into the configuration tab. We'll need to select a username and password. Now remember, this add-on actually exposes the file share of the Home Assistant uh, folder structure. So make sure you select a very, let's say, not intuitive username and a very complex password. Scroll down, click on save. Let's go back to info. If you want to be very security conscious, you might skip on starting this add-on on boot and maybe just manually starting it when you need it. It's up to you. Let's click on start. All right, so now the 
add-on has been installed, configured, and started. So again, let's take a glimpse of what this add-on allows us to do. If we'll open up a file explorer window, and I'll type backslash backslash and the IP address of my home assistant. I'll type in the username and password that I have supplied in the configuration tab of the, of the add-on. Let's click on OK. And now we can see folders and files on my home assistant server. For example, if I'll go to config, here's my configuration YAML file, the one that we saw in text using the previous add-on that we've installed. So the need to actually copy and paste files to Home Assistant is very, let's say, rare. So we will be safe to just not starting this add-on on boot and just manually starting it when you need it. But when you need it, it's a very helpful add-on to have around. So that's item number three, done. Item number four on my list is installing what is known as Hex or Home Assistant Community Store, and that's another source of getting add-ons and integrations and visual styles into your Home Assistant. It was, it used to be a, a much more uh, involved process to get this installed. Now it, beca it has become a very simple installation, so I am including it in the first five things you should do, even though this only enables you things to do a bit later on. So let's get started. If you'll open up your very favorite a search engine and you'll search home assistant install hex the very first a, a, a result will get you right here and I will also include this URL in the description of this video if you'll scroll down a little bit you'll see that to add hex into home assistant select this link make sure that the instance typed here is correct if not you can of course edit it and we'll select the correct IP address remember the default web interface port of Home Assistant is 8123 on HTTP, not HTTPS. So let's click on update and now select open link. It will tell you that you're missing the add-on repository, so click on add, click on install, of course start on boot and start hex. At this point you need to restart your Home Assistant server, so go into settings, systems, click on the power button right here and restart Home Assistant. According to the speed of your system, it will take you from a few seconds to a minute or two. I will pause the recording, of course, and resume it once my Home Assistant has been loaded. All right, my Home Assistant has restarted, and now what we'll need to do, we'll need to go into Settings, Devices and Services, Add Integration, and Search for Hex. Click on it, Acknowledge Everything, Click on submit, and now you'll go. You'll need to open this link right here. If you don't have a GitHub account, make sure to create one. You will need it very often in Home Assistant. All right, so I have logged into my GitHub account, and we'll need to supply a code here. And of course, this is the code you'll need to supply. Click continue. Click authorize, and we're all set. Close out of here skip and finish and the integration is now loaded i know it was a little bit more involved than than other steps but now here's a glimpse of what the hex integration looks like and what it gives us here it is right here and you see that it it's filled with a lot of integrations and themes and button types that are not curated in the default home assistant integrations list and maybe it's a little bit more advanced at this point when you you're just getting started in home assistant but it will surely give you a lot of benefit moving forward in your future uses of Home Assistant. Trust me, a lot of the integrations I use are integrations that come from Hex. So that's item number four, done. All right, so the last items, the last item, sorry, on my list is backups. And believe me, this cannot be more overstated. Backups are critical. Even if you place, I don't know, a dot in the wrong place in your configuration YAML, Home Assistant will not load anymore. It's a very sensitive systems, system, sorry. so backups are paramount. If you're running your Home Assistant as a virtual machine, for example on Proxmox, the backup, the backup desk is actually 
done in home in Proxmox, sorry, which is easier and I think a lot more efficient. So if I'll go to my Proxmox instance, this is the Proxmox instance. I'm running my demo home assistant instance on and this is the virtual machine. So if I want to make sure I backup my home assistant virtual machine, I will go to data center, backup and add, select a schedule that it makes sense to you. Let's say every day at nine, select the virtual machine in question, select the retention you want to, make sure I'll keep the last five versions, advanced, let's select metadata here make sure you select the storage that is relevant to your to where you keep your backups in proxmox otherwise click on create and now select run now to make the very first backup of your home assistant instance because backups again are paramount when you configure your backups go ahead and create your first backup all right so our first backup is complete and if you want to see uh, a sort of a tutorial or a guide on how to use the built-in native backup application in Home Assistant if you're running your Home Assistant on physical hardware, please let me know in a comment below and I will create a video specifically on that topic. Otherwise, these were my very first five things you need to do after you install Home Assistant to get your Home Assistant instance ready to work with or very ready to start configuring. If you like this video, please give it a like. It will help me a lot with the YouTube algorithm. Otherwise, I will see you all in my next video. Thanks for watching, everyone.